single phase electric motor problems? Here's a couple checks you can make saving you time and money. Electric Bob here with a couple tests you can make that may just get you up and running. But first, the legal stuff. While the information contained in this short video is factual, we at electricalhelper.org are not liable for any actions or damage performed as a result of having watched this video. Electric motors are really nothing more than electromagnets, which do nothing more than pull the rotating part of the motor around. An electric magnet is made up of two parts. Number one, laminated steel sheets pressed together, and two, magnet wire. If we wind turns of wire through the laminated iron, we will have a coil, which we can apply DC power to, making it an electromagnet. However, in our case, we want the rotating part of the motor to keep turning so we can attach our load to the shaft of the motor. Therefore, if we wind another coil adjacent the last coil, but of opposite polarity, in other words, if we wound our first one through the iron in a clockwise manner, our second one would want to be wound in a counterclockwise manner because this would cause one north and one south pole when we apply power. Because in the single phase motors I will be showing for purpose of this video, I will need to wind two more coils in the iron stack at right angles to those shown in order to induce a magnetic field across the rotor so the motor will start. As you can see, I numbered the ends of the coils so it is easier to understand. First, I am going to connect number two to number three. This makes a series circuit from number one through the coils to number four. This will be our run winding. Next, we will connect a wire from 7A to 7B, creating a series circuit from number six through the coils to number eight. This will be our start winding circuit. Here is the first test you can make. Connect an ohm meter from number one to number four and see if you have a close to zero ohm reading. You are just checking for a circuit. If it is extremely high resistance or infinite, there is something wrong in the motor. Here's the second test you can make. Connect an ohm meter from number one to the frame of the motor and see if you have an ohm reading other than infinite. You are just checking for any resistance. If you see anything other than infinite, there is something wrong in the motor. While the above circuit is valid for some very small circuits, more often your motor will be a capacitor start motor. Therefore, we must add a start capacitor, a start switch, and a governor on the rotor. We will do that now. We are showing you a connection from number six to the start capacitor, through the start capacitor to the start switch. From the start switch, we're going to come out on lead number five. I have to explain that it is very possible in your motor that the capacitor and the start switch will be reversed in other words, we would come off of the winding going to the start switch first, through the start switch, then through the capacitor, and out to lead number five. It makes absolutely no difference because they're in series. So since they're in series, it doesn't matter which one comes first. This is a typical single phase capacitor start motor as shown here. Our next step is to make sure that the capacitor has no charge, which we can do with a couple insulated screwdrivers. Place a screwdriver on each of the two terminals and bring the two screwdriver shanks together. This step will make sure that there is no voltage left in the capacitor. We are not going into all the different possible connections and voltages in this video because we are trying to keep it simple with just a couple quick tests. We will now remove the wire or wires from one side of the capacitor, as indicated by the arrow. Since we know number one in the above drawing is connected to a line lead, 
and number four is connected to the other side of the line, we will use these two leads for our following test. Your ohm reading should be close to zero between number one and the wire that remains connected to the capacitor. Likewise, the reading should be close to zero between number four and the capacitor. The next test is similar to the previous, however, we will be connecting the test probe to the wire that we removed from the capacitor. Your ohm reading should be close to zero between number one and the wire that was disconnected from the capacitor. Likewise, the reading should be close to zero between number four and the wire that was disconnected from the capacitor. If any of the previous tests show infinite or a high resistance reading, there are internal motor problems. If your meter has a capacitor test position, you can put the test probes across the capacitor and read its value. If not, you can place the meter in ohms position to see if the value is increasing on the meter. The ohm test is not accurate but testing to see if the capacitor takes a charge. Remember to reinstall the wire you removed from the capacitor, as indicated by the arrow. The governor shown is only one of many designs. However, its function is to let the weights change position at approximately 80% full speed, which allows the stationary switch contacts to open. The governor is pressed on the end of the rotor and its plate closes the start switch contacts in the static position. The stationary switch is normally affixed to the back end bell. You can remove a wire from one side of the switch and test with an ohm meter to see if there is a circuit through the switch. You must gently apply pressure to the two black pads on the switch to close the contacts. This completes the quick checks for our single phase motor. Thanks for watching and have a great year.